Dave yes. Hamilton, everyone. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Big, big round of applause for Mike for putting this together. And really, a big round of applause for all of you. Because look where we are. This is awesome. Yeah, so when Mike asked me to speak, I had no idea what I was going to talk about. Um, and I started coming up with ideas of, oh, I'll, I can teach this or teach that. I actually had a really good idea this morning that I almost punted and moved to that to teach everybody how to get out of iCloud Photo Library. Because um, <laughs> I am sick and tired of, I've been traveling a bunch, and I'm sick and tired of waking up and having my phone tell me, I didn't get to back up because you don't have enough space. But we're not going to do that. Or maybe we'll do it later. Um, and then somebody asked me a question because they needed help. And I knew exactly what my topic was going to be. Uh, I've been giving, I've been giving uh, tech support for 30 plus years. I have been receiving tech support longer than that. And just because I started giving tech support does not, as you all know, does not mean that you stop receiving tech support. Um, even on the same topic sometimes, but, but certainly in, in a general sense. Uh, we all give and receive tech support. And, uh, and when this friend asked me for help, I realized approach matters. Now, this is obvious to any of us, all of us in the room. And the reason that it's obvious to all of us in the room is because none of us are actively in the process of giving or receiving tech support, unless John's helping his mom from his laptop or something. <laughs> uh, as soon as you get involved in that process, sometimes the thought that approach matters escapes. Uh, and we'll, we'll start with my thoughts about people receiving tech support, which would be all of us. Uh, but then we'll talk about those of us that, that give tech support too, which is probably most of the people here in the room, because uh, we're all uh, we're all guilty, I think, at, at one time or another. The idea is that behind tech support is it's about two people, two humans interacting. But it's more than just two humans interacting. You're not passing each other on the, on the, on the subway platform. You are, it, the, the, the goal ostensibly is for one of these humans to help another, and perhaps vice versa, right? Of course, approach matters. Uh, However, it, as soon as you get involved in the process, sometimes eh, you get lost on that. And, you know, the awareness it flies out the window. And, uh, and what can happen is uh, you wind up with someone asking the question, you know, hey, uh, this computer sucks. And, and then and suddenly, you know, you're, you're upset. Everybody's upset, right? And there's nothing worse than a geek that feels blamed for technology, right? We love our tech. And so when somebody comes to us, and this is what happened to me recently, somebody came to me and said, oh, this new Mac that I got sucks, and started telling me about this problem that he was having. And in, instantly, there's like all these reactions going on in me. But one of them is, you know, I was mad, right? Uh, because, uh, it, it, you know, I, I wanted, uh, I, I want tech to work. I'm a geek, right? And so I, I love this technology. And, um, it, you know, it, I'm not to blame for his Mac not working. But I get where he's coming from with this. We, you know, we geeks are the reason that these things kind of make it in. We're the gateway, right? You know, we're, we're all wearing the Apple watches. We've got this stuff. And eventually, everybody else will have it. And then they'll start yelling, like, like me this morning. My boarding pass from yesterday won't leave my watch, even though it's deleted and gone, right? And so somebody's going to tell me something. This thing sucks. Well, boarding pass won't leave. Well, OK, but it doesn't actually suck. It's just, you know, it's, it's a problem. But we do. We feel responsible for this, because we're the ones that, that put these things on first. We use them first. And so the thing to remember is it's not that geek's fault that your technology is, work, is not working. And, and in, in fact, it's probably your fault that it's not working. Because whether you know it or not, you know, and we all know this, uh, when, you, when your computer stops working, things, it's usually something you did. And, 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 of course, and I get it, right? It's, it's normally just a thinly veiled kind of attack at, at hiding ignorance. And, and we see through this. Now, two things can happen to us geeks when we are told this sucks. The first thing is we get sad, you know, because we love this. 
and, and we want to really help. Um, and that can, you know, that's not so good. Uh, but it's, it's how it works. Or we get, you know, Superman geek, I'm going to fix this, right? And that's OK, and we want to prove you wrong. But a lot of times what happens is we just get pissed. And then we don't really, we're not really incentivized to help. And we either get condescending, and we'll talk more about that in a bit, because we can get that way. I, not you, Allison. No, 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 no. M me sometimes. But we'll talk about it. Yeah, we're, we're exempt. That's right. Uh, so the, the trick is just ask nicely. You're frustrated, and we're all guilty of this, but, and, and it's because, you know, we're frustrated. So just ask nicely. We will all forget this. We all say amen, and yet we will all forget this. But hopefully we'll remember a little more frequently. Uh, and, you know, our stuff works fine, right? So <laughs> it, it's... <laughs> We, your problem isn't our problem. And, and that, it, we'll, and we'll get there. Um, I, I had a, when I was about 17, I guess, I was in our kitchen. We had a wall-mounted phone. I think we had cordless phones by that point, but I was on our wall-mounted phone in the kitchen. Um, my dad and, and my stepmom were in the kitchen. I think we were either you know, making dinner or cleaning up from dinner or something. And I was on hold because I had some problem. And, uh, there was a, a product that I had, and it was totally screwed up, and it was absolutely a fault of, of the, the manufacturer. And I was frustrated. And so I'm on the phone, and I navigate the hold tree or the phone tree or whatever it was, and now I'm on hold waiting for that support rep. And, uh, and I said to my dad, I said, oh, man, when, when this person gets on the phone, I am going to let them have it because this product sucks, and it, it, they, really, they need to fix this for me. And... Uh, and I'm just going to let him have it. And my dad looks at me, and he says, uh, oh, that'll be fun to watch. Uh, and he says, so, but let me just get this straight. He says, they're not on the phone yet, are they? I'm like, no, no, it's, I'm still on hold. He says, so you're going you're gonna to take the one person in the world that's able to help you, and you're going to just fire at him, aren't you? And uh, I said, well, I, 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 I was going to. You know? <laughs> and I hated him. For, I mean, he was totally right. I didn't hate him for it. He was totally right, but he took the wind out of my sails. But it made me, you know, it made me realize, oh, yeah, that it, it's not, A, it's not this person's fault. And frankly, even if it was, it really doesn't matter. They are the one person. I am asking them for help. The reason that I'm asking them for help is inconsequential. I need their help. They can help me. Let them help. And perhaps, you know, incentivize them to help. Be nice, right? In, in fact, that is, when we're asking for tech support, that's the key. Use those three words, I need help. It, there, this is a powerful thing. We humans, if somebody says, um, uh, I need you to go over there and, and, and open that door, like, oh, well, why? You know? But if they say, hey, uh, I need some help. Can you help me? Your answer is always yes. And then, oh yeah, would you mind uh, just go close that door or open the door? That's it, right? It, we are incentivized by this. We like to help, unless we're sociopaths, and then we're not. Um, but, you know, that's um, just ask nicely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not going to hurt you. Unless it does, because you're a sociopath, and then that's, uh, that's just how that's going to go. So, to, uh, you know, it, it, to, to wrap this up, or to add some things to this, when you're receiving tech support, you can help the geek as much as the geek can help you. And by the way, this applies, of course, not just to computer stuff, but if you need help with your dryer or whatever, you know, it's your thing. And you are asking someone to help you, even if they're supposed to and you've got a warranty and all of that stuff. It, you, they're still human beings. Take notes and share those notes with them. It, uh, it, it, it makes a big difference. Accept responsibility. I need help, right? Be appreciative. Saying thank you. I mean, this is like kindergarten stuff. But it, it does not always happen. And it happens too infrequently. Um, ask for an explanation. We geeks love to be the rock star. We love to explain things. And this is true of somebody that's a geek with cars or a geek with whatever. Whatever they're helping you, 
ask for an explanation. I mean, try not to you know, burden them with it, but they love to, we as geeks, love to explain. Offer water, soda, or beer, but maybe save the beer for after the problem's fixed. I don't know, it depends. I mean, if you need something coated, you might want to give them some beer. It might get done better, I don't know. Uh, no beer for you guys yet. <laughs> uh, and then again, you know, when it's all finished, just thanks for helping me. So that's when we're receiving tech support. Now, it's our turn as the geeks. Um, we are not off the hook, because even when someone is doing all the right things, or especially when they're doing the wrong things, it doesn't matter. We're here to help. If you're not there to help, don't be involved. Don't, don't offer that out. But I mean, just help people. And, and remember that that's what you're here to do. It's, of course, it's not easy when you have the, you know, the puffy-chested newbie that wants to tell you, this thing sucks. But, you know, we're back to the two people happy and helping each other. Uh, one of those people, theoretically, knows a lot more about what's going on than the other, and that's why help is being requested. Will Wheaton has a great law that, uh, that extends to a lot of things in life, which I, I kept out of this, but uh, th I think this sums it up. Don't be a jackass. Uh, it, you know, it really, it, yes, I'm helping you, but, and I know more, I don't need to be, I don't need to rub it in your face. Nobody wants that. And, it, and it's easy for it to happen. It can, you can get into that whole thing where you're just like, oh, this, let's do this and this and this. And, and you can wind up, uh, it's easy to get condescending. And I'm as guilty of it as anyone else. It's worse for me with family members, for whatever reason, right? It's good to take a breath. Yeah. Walk away, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, uh, but again, you know, it comes, it comes back to being interested in helping. I had, we have, a, we have a, an issue with our boiler at home. It's 25 years old, of course we have an issue with it. Um, and it might last until it's 40, but it might not. We had a tech come out recently, and it was uh, just for an annual cleaning. And it was the first time this tech has ever been to our house. It was the first time we've seen him. And uh, immediately, the first thing he says is, well, your boiler's more than 20 years old, which has been true now for five years, and they come clean it every year. Your boiler's more than 20 years old, and our service contracts don't extend to boilers that are more than 20 years old. OK, well, I don't know. OK, you know, fair, fair enough. Except we paid for the service contract, and you offered it to us, and we took it. So. This year it covers it, but I'm guessing you're going to go back and tell people that it, we're not going to get this next year, and that's, that's fine. But, you know, here you are. It didn't change the fact that our boiler was older than he wanted it to be. He, was, had, he had no interest in helping us. And he, it, it, the, the visit was worthless. Um, it's important to remember, you know, if, you're, if you don't actually want to help someone, if all you're interested in doing is punching the, uh, the I did what I was supposed to do and, and, and that's it, find a different line of work. Do something else. It's really important. One thing, I learned this from my uh, former business partner. I had a business called Computer Nerds, which was pre-Geek Squad stuff back in the, the late 90s. And we had a bunch of people that worked for us. We'd go out in the field and, you know, solve printer problems and, and, and you know, fix things. And one of the things that uh, my friend Lee, we, we had a lot of things that were, we called magic phrases. And this was one of them. It's not you as the computer owner versus me, the geek, trying to get your computer working, right? It's also not me, the geek, versus you and your computer. It's us, the two of us, versus your computer. And the way Lee put it to me that has stuck with me is, you know, it's not, you're not sitting across the desk from the person. You know, you're sitting next to them and working together on this. And that's a really important approach to take, especially if you are uh, charging people and doing this for a living. But it's an important approach to take anyway, right? It's, you know, it's not... Um, it doesn't need to be an adversarial relationship between two people. Now, it might be two people with an adversarial relationship to the computer, because uh, for obvious reasons. But it's not between two people. And one way, one magic phrase 
to uh, keep in mind when you do that is to say to the person, if it were mine. That's a really powerful thing because it shows a lot. It, it shows that your, your partner's in this. It shows that you're taking it seriously. Uh, it also shows that you're not going to impose your wishes on this machine, that you are just offering, here's what I would do with it. And then if they say yes, then of course you go ahead and do that. But if they say, no, I don't want that being done to my computer, then you're done. But you're, you're still partners in this, if it were mine. And then you're happy, right? The two people uh, are then happy together. But listening is key, right? You, you can't enforce and, and impose all this stuff onto the customer. And another way to make sure you sit on the same side of the desk together is let the customer drive as much as possible. Now, when you're solving problems or whatever, that, then it totally makes sense for you to drive. But when you get there, and a customer could be a friend, uh, you know, I'm using customer in the, in the more traditional sense. Let them drive. Let them show you how it works. Don't just listen to what they say, unless they can't show you and then you have to. But let them drive. Some things will be exposed. A, hopefully you'll see the problem, but you'll also see how they get there. And it's important not to necessarily change someone's workflow. So you get to see how their path, you're, you might take a different path and not even experience the problem, and it could be something about their path that's causing this problem, right? So listen, uh, let them drive, and, and uh, the thing is, when you let the customer drive and show you what's going on, and, uh, and then at the end, you let them drive and show you, it, it can often be the difference in getting paid or not, right? Uh, I always like to say, when, I'm, when I was doing paid tech support, I'm not paid for solutions, I'm paid for expertise. And that's true of the person that's working on your car, that's true of the person that's working on your boiler, right? You, but as the, as the person with the expertise, you need to reinforce that. And the way to do that is by explaining throughout the process. Here's if, again, if it were mine, here's what I would do. You're sharing all of this expertise. And it's really important to do that. That way the customer feels like, oh yeah, all the way through. You get to the end, okay, well, we've done all of these things and there's no solution to this. And, and you gotta watch that you don't spin your wheels. You know, you don't wanna spin for two hours trying things that probably aren't gonna work. At some point, you need to draw the line and say, okay, here's where we are. If it were mine, yeah, I'd spend another three hours doing this. But you probably don't want to pay me for three more hours of spinning my wheels when I think maybe there's a 20% chance. But if it were mine, that's what I'd do. Here's the other path that we can take. Again, really important, keep the customer as engaged as possible. They'll learn something, they'll appreciate it, and they'll be happy in the end, even happier in the end, even if there's no actual solution to the problem. So tips for us geeks. Form a partnership, right? Very important. Let the customer be involved. Let them be as involved as possible. En encourage them to be involved. Some people just don't want to, they just, here, fix this. Okay, well, this isn't gonna go well, but we'll try. Offer the if it were mine advice. <laughs> and follow Wheaton's law. <laughs> because it's really important. And I don't get there all the time. And, you know, remember, there are no sides uh, to this. You are always there with the customer, and that is important. It's a noble cause, helping people with anything. Treat it that way. Treat it like you care. Treat it like you care about the person that's there, and you'll get there. And that's all I have to say on this subject. So thank you. We had talked about, because we, we thought we had extra time here, we had talked about doing a little Stump the Geek, but we're at five of lunchtime, so I don't know if you want to do Stump the Geek or not. So. We've got a couple minutes. Does it, is anyone interested? Any, in anybody have a question? We can, we can do a little Stump the Geek. We'll, we'll get the room involved. I think there's a microphone that we're going to try to use. Yeah, Brian. Brian's got a microphone Great. up there, and I've got one here, so we can I, carry it around if anyone wants to see if they can stump the geek. We'll just turn it into a group tech support session, which seems, which seems fitting after that. All right, we got a hand way up in the back. All right, there you go, sir. Thank you. 
Uh, I've been asked to help a elderly Mac user convert her Eudora email into Mac mail. Uh, any suggestions? Yeah, actually, that that shouldn't that shouldn't be too bad because Eudora stores everything stored, but I guess still stores everything in the uh, mbox format, which is a, a a standard format. It is the format that Unix Mail started using, and so you should just be able to drag those in to Mail. Mail's importer used to offer an option for Eudora. I honestly don't recall if it's still there, but yeah, you can totally just drag them in. They're, they're inbox files. Make a backup of everything first, because invariably, well, yeah, right? I mean, that's what we do. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, should, it actually shouldn't be, it should be pretty trivial. And, and I get to leave before you actually try this, so it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. I, mm, yes? I was just going to say that they actually do allow Eudora right from the import. It's right there. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the way to do it. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Dave, I, I got a question for you. I remember, uh, I don't know how long ago it was, but I watched a screencast online of Don McAllister. And he actually showed how to use um, Dragon Dictate with a Bluetooth microphone using the Sunflower, which was the program that Allison Sheridan oh, yeah. had mentioned this morning as well. But uh, you know, after setting it up and, and following all the great advice that Don gave to set it up, I noticed there was some delay or latency between the Bluetooth mic and the computer, which made it kind of unusable for me. So I plugged the USB mic back in. Any recommendations on possibly uh, utilizing that type of a setup or? No, uh, that, that is just a function of Bluetooth speakers. Uh, there, there was a, a function of Bluetooth. It, I mean, it, it happens with speakers too, right? Where they'll, they can easily be out of sync with what's going on on the Mac. You may not, it, it, depending on the, the way it's implemented, so you could try a different mic to see if perhaps you can get it a little faster, but even, even with the fastest thing on the market, it doesn't work uh, along those lines. If you wind up doing a lot of uh, Skype calls or you know Google Hangouts or anything where where you're and and you're not using headphones, you're using just a um, the speakers on your Mac. Skype and Google Hangouts will um, mute. Essentially, they'll they'll deal with the the they won't let it feedback. Right? It it mutes your mic while you're while someone else is talking and then vice versa. But uh, if you use Bluetooth speakers that process, the delay that's introduced by Bluetooth speakers will actually cause echoes to come through because the software doesn't account for the extra delay. So yeah, Bluetooth speakers, I mean, it, they're great, uh, but they have, or even, you know, Bluetooth audio has a built-in delay and you've just got to be aware of that uh, as the issue. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, all right, Leon. We, we need to get right microphone just so it stays on the oh, I can get recording. Really loud. <laughs> Same. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, here I am, I'm at a friend's house, and you know, it's a large building, probably 3,000 apartments, and here I am with my iPad, iOS 8, iPad Air 2, and I don't have a Bluetooth speaker, but I have a folio. And all of a sudden, my battery is just draining and draining, and I keep seeing the little uh, uh, AirPlay go on and off, on and off, and oh, I click yeah. it, and I see all these people's speakers and computers all throughout the building, in my, and it's trying to connect to my battery, just going, what do I do? Well, I, just the, the presence of those devices on the network. Oh, at the Folio keyboard. It's Zach's. Yeah. Right, and so it's, it connects via Bluetooth. Right. So I have the Bluetooth on, and when, yeah. I am, uh, when I'm listening to something, all of a sudden AirPlay is picking up all of these microphones in the building. But so AirPlay is Wi-Fi. AirPlay is not Bluetooth. So the fact that Bluetooth is on is not related to it finding AirPlay yeah. stuff. But also, it, it shouldn't be... I've never seen it. Where, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to yeah, discount I'm, what you're saying, but, but, but yeah, having... I've never seen it where air, but just the presence of other devices is and enough. And I would click on it and it would show all yeah. the devices. You know, you know, 
Rob, maybe there's Robinson's iMac or whatever the case may be, and I'm like, huh. there's no one else in this building, in this room, in this apartment. Yeah. Me. And yeah, and all these things keep popping up, and I'm watching my battery just go. Huh. Yeah. Bluetooth speakers show up under the airplane. Yeah, because you can play. Oh, like that. I see what you're saying. Podcast. Right. Right. But well, then again, they could. Uh, yeah, because I have people that believe. Oh, that no, you you're around. right. That's right. They show up in the same place. That's right. right. I could, yeah. I was supposed to do podcasts. I could have airplayed it. Yeah. But, yeah. And so they just yeah, keep showing yeah, them yeah. up, and they disappear, and the battery just, like I said, huh. just drops. Yeah, it's a weird huh. one. I guess Apple, huh? Yeah. I could, but then I couldn't, uh, as I'm listening to the podcast, I couldn't use the keyboard to type the Correct. document that I was doing. Unless Correct. I wanted to do it on the iPad itself. But right. I have enough fingerprints on there, I can be able to see the keys now. Well, that, but that's not his, his, his device isn't discoverable. It's all the other ones that he's seeing that right. are. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, by John F. Bond, I learned, shut it off before you get photobombed with. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I learned that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't leave it on. Why don't we go ahead and let these people get lunch? And, Sounds uh, like Glenn. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Really thank you. It. Thanks, Mike. This is awesome that you've done here, man. Really awesome. Okay, so.